My name is Hannah, and this is my Year of Less Stuff. Hey y'all, welcome to not the video that you thought that I would be posting today because in my check-in I said that my next video would be the video about the things that I bought with my budget in March. That video is coming, but today is the day that Erin from Erin's Faces is launching her new mascara. And I just, I wanted to just film myself putting the mascara on. I'm sorry about this noise. It started halfway through the get ready with me portion of the video and it hasn't stopped. So I had been planning to film a get ready with me showcasing the mascara to post on its launch date and then they moved the launch date up, it's today. So when I sat down to put my makeup on today, I was like, I'm just gonna film myself putting my like my everyday face on. This is like the pretty much the exact makeup and uh, makeup I've been wearing almost every day for the past couple of weeks. And I was like, I'm just gonna put it on, share it with you, talk a little bit about, maybe even at the end of this intro, I'll talk a little bit about like wearing makeup during quarantine at all and like what it's doing for me and why I'm still continuing to do it. Um, and also showing you the details of it and also showcasing the Rowan 52 Degrees cool quad because a lot of you have been asking me to do that. So I just decided to film it today and post it today because today is the launch day of the mascara. I am like on my last nerve because of that noise. I guess the noise is on my last nerve, that's how you would say it. So this is the mascara. It's called the Erin's Faces Matcha Mascara. It's made with matcha and it's not green, it's black. It just has matcha as an ingredient. I'll give you a closer close up of the component and the wand and everything in the video when I'm applying it. Erin's Faces is a clean, beauty brand. So this is a mascara with a clean ingredient deck and it's very high performing and that is super exciting. I've had it for like a month. I've been able to use it several days. I've probably worn it at least every other day for a month. So like 15 to 20 days at least. I've really gotten to know how it performs. It's also gotten a chance to dry out if it was going to dry out and kind of like get to its good middle phase, which I feel like happens to all mascaras. So that's the phase that this is in right now. And that's what you'll be seeing when you see me apply it in the video. I have also discovered one drawback to this mascara for me. And I'll talk you through that in the get ready with me after I apply it. I'll, I'll tell you sort of like the one thing that has been a little bit of a problem for me. It hasn't been a prohibitive problem, but I just wanna give you guys as full and thorough a review as possible. And I'm grateful to Erin for sending this to me in advance so that I'm able to actually like publish that review on the day of the launch instead of it being like a get ready with me and then having to come back with an actual informed review. I'm able to give you a demonstration and a full informed review all at once today. In the get ready with me, I'm also showcasing again the Rowan Quad, the 52 Degrees Cool, the Erin's Faces lip gloss and the Erin's Faces concealer. I thought I might as well go all in. This video is not sponsored by the way at all by Erin's Faces. I mean, she sent it along as PR and she was basically just like, let me know what you think. She do doesn't even know that I'm filming this video. So um, I'm doing it because I want to. I also really love this brand and now more than ever, I am very motivated to be raising up and supporting small brands, independent brands. This is a small, independent, woman-owned brand. And as far as I have been able to tell from everything that I've tested, their products are really impressive. I know that for a lot of people, shopping for anything, you know, mascara, anything, isn't really on the table right now because I'm not the only person whose finances have been destabilized by this pandemic, this quarantine. And so I know that there are a lot of you out there watching right now for whom like buying something, no matter who released it, no matter like what brand it's from and no matter what's going on with small brands right now, for you like buying something isn't an option. And so I'm not trying to like say that you've got to buy this in order to be like a person who's like, of course not. I mean, I'm not, I've never been that way. And I'm not, and if you or your financial situation isn't healthy or is healthy right now, isn't destabilized right now, I'm also not trying to say like you should be buying this mascara. I'm just excited to be able to showcase it for you and give a thorough review of it. It's one of the things that I really love doing here on YouTube and I'm excited to be able to do that on the actual launch day. I just wanted to acknowledge that I know that this is like a hard time for a product launch and um, I, I feel like I'm really proud of Erin. I feel like a high performing clean mascara that's something that I don't I don't know of another one like I didn't know, and I obviously don't know everything about clean beauty under the sun but I've had people ask me in person like 
can you recommend for me a really, really good mascara that gives me a dramatic effect, but that's clean? And I've had to say to them, no, I don't know of one. All of the mascaras that I've ever fallen in love with, all of the ones that I can endorse because they give me what I want as a makeup wearer, they're all from like big brands, Sephora brands, IT Cosmetics, Dior, you know, like those are the mascaras that I've really loved or drugstore brands like the Milani one. And now when people ask me that question, I will be able to say to them, yes, there is one. There's the Aaron Spaces Matcha Mascara. It goes the distance. It does the most and it's clean. And to me, that is really exciting. They've put something, Aaron has put something out into the market that adds to the market. It's a big deal. And I feel like that's worth celebrating no matter what else is going on in the world. It might even be like more worth celebrating somebody managing to reach a great achievement in her career because of what's going on in the world. Like it's one thing today to be excited about when there aren't a lot of things to be excited about. Even if you're not gonna buy it, even if you couldn't care less, even if you don't wear mascara, in isolation, it's just something great. Erin has told me in our conversations that she has wanted to launch a mascara since the very beginning of her brand, but it's taken like eight or nine years because she didn't wanna put one out into the market. She didn't want to release one if it wasn't good. And to her, good, like, I feel like to her, a good mascara, it means the same thing as it means to me. Like it, you have to be able to get that drama, that buildability, that, that volume. It has to be like a really good mascara and not just one that like does kind of the job. And it took a really long time. There was formula after formula after formula that she rejected. I think that it's just really hard to formulate a good mascara and it's really, really, really hard to do it without the things that big brands put in their mascaras that make them not count as clean beauty. Uh, so it's, it's a huge achievement for her and that's why I'm making this video today instead of the other video because I just feel like I care about Erin. She's like awesome. We've never met in person, but I see her heart and everything she does in her brand, and it's something that I'm happy to use my platform to promote. And that said, I just wanna remind you that even if you're not shopping right now, you're not shopping for makeup, or you're not interested in this product for one reason or another, or not interested in products from the brand, there are other ways to support this brand and to support small brands. There are other ways besides buying from them. So if you feel compelled to show support, but you don't want to buy anything, just like following on Instagram, leaving a comment on Instagram, reposting, liking, even like liking this video or like helping, you know what I mean? Just like helping to build the wave of support to, to send a message to small brands that they're not forgotten, that they're still connected to people during this hard time. That helps a lot. It helps with morale and it also helps like algorithmically to, um, you know, help a brand like hop the gap of this insane time. One thing I actually do recommend is signing up for Erin's mailing list. She sends really beautiful newsletters and she has a blog. There's a recent blog post that she wrote about body image ish issues, like one's body image in the fashion industry and in the makeup industry, in beauty in general, that is absolutely exquisite. And I'm, I'm going to link the mascara down below and I'm also gonna link that blog post. And if nothing else, I really recommend clicking through and reading Erin's blog post. She is a really special woman. All right, let's move on to pretty much the meat of the video. It's just gonna be me putting on this makeup. And I, I feel like it's something that I wanted to share with you because I have been pretty faithfully putting on an eye look like this, like some sort of light but slightly smoky, glittery, bronzy eye look most days. I feel like in normal times, my default light makeup is to put on just mascara and a lip of some kind and like my my base. I've been doing more than that lately, even though I've had way less than I usually have to do that would merit makeup because we're just staying home. I've been putting on an eye look most days and I've felt like it has helped me out a lot. It has helped with morale. Basically every time I've been going through my weird day, like our days are so weird now, just like writing, working, doing some cleaning, maybe cooking, if I've ever caught sight of myself in the mirror, like in the bathroom mirror or my vanity mirror, then I've seen a, a woman in the mirror who has this smoldery, smudgy eye in and looks just 
a little cool, a little bit cooler than I usually look if I just wear mascara and base. I just have that edge. It makes me feel like the person I'm looking at in the mirror is the woman that I'm aspiring to be in the world, the person that I'm like working on becoming. And I feel like there's a danger in this time of losing touch with that because usually that person manifests, the, that woman that I'm trying to become out in the world, you know, like I go out there, I do stuff, I go to work, I interact with people, I hang out with my friends, I go places, have meetings, you know, like those are the places, those are like the occasions on which I like work on being my best self, becoming my self. And right now, none of that stuff is happening. So I feel like there's a danger of losing touch with that person, that like evolving or evolved that manifestation of the self. It might sound so inconsequential, but the point of me telling you this is that I found that it's not inconsequential. But um, by going the distance and putting on that eye look that I was enjoying so much in the months leading up to this, it's like what made me feel my best when I was out in the world. By putting that eye look on and by seeing that version of myself in the mirror every time I get a glimpse of myself, it's like it's encouraged me. It's helped me remember that all of that work that I did still matters and the work that I'm doing now at home is still going towards making me into the person that I want to be and that I am going to continue to have the chance to be that person as time goes on. It just helps me not to lose the thread. So in addition to showing you the mascara, giving you a good super thorough up close review, the point of this video is to show you the makeup that I've been doing kind of on the daily and just to let you know that if you're a person who has historically enjoyed putting on makeup to go out and about, but now that you're not going out and about, if you're not, you have been like, what's the point? I wanna show you what I've been doing and let you know that there is a point and um, maybe encourage you to give it a try as well. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Okay, let's get the show on the road. Before we start, I have to say that my hair is misbehaving terribly today, so I hereby absolve myself of all responsibility for its actions. I am going to put on a hefty layer of the VDL Lumi Layer Primer. Still loving it. I feel like it's very indulgent to be using this every single day when I have other primers that theoretically I would like to get through but it's part of my project of only using the products that I said that I would buy if I were starting over from scratch. And so far, I haven't gotten sick of it. I decided to take the hit of just like using it up faster by using only it for a couple of weeks because I wanted to see if I would get sick of it. My only regret has been just knowing that because this project is kind of like a false situation or just an experimental situation, my other primers are rotting away in the box under the desk. And every, every once in a while I think of them and I'm like, ah, oh, I wish I could rotate them in so that I could use them up. But in terms of using this, I haven't had a day where I'm like, oh, I'm tired of using this. I wish that I could use something else. And I think you can see with this shot, especially with the lighting here, I know that it's not the most elegant background and it's like a little bit harshly just sort of confined. Um, but for now, it's working the best in terms of like the flow of my daily life around my stuff and my equipment and everything. And I feel like you can see the shine really well in this shot. Like you can see why I love it so much. And hopefully, as I build the look that I've been doing, you'll be able to see how it contributes to the effect of the final look because I use sheer layers of product and the Air and Spaces Concealer, which I've been using every day, is so dewy that it works really well together with this. It's almost like they combine forces and I end up looking this dewy throughout the day, but just with more even skin tone. And speaking of that, I'm going to go straight ahead to that step. I'm using cream shadows on my eyes today, so I don't feel like I need to do my eyes first. I'm not going to get fallout with the row and shadows, so I'm going to go ahead and do my skin. So the Erin Spaces Concealer is, it's so nourishing. It feels like skincare with really great coverage and it looks like skincare. Like it always ends up looking like I've put some moisturizer on, but it's like moisturizer that provides really beautiful coverage. But because it's a little bit dark for me, for what I like to do in terms of brightening up and evening out my skin, I always mix it with a green color corrector, which I'm, the reason I'm not looking at you as I speak is that 
I'm having trouble finding my green color corrector. Where is it? Oh, it was right here in the box, right here on the corner of my desk, just sitting there, absolutely not hidden away. It was just right there the whole time. Why are my bangs, look, my bangs are going like up. It's fine. So this is what I've been doing every single day. To be honest, it's like my favorite step right now in my makeup routine. I just love the finish of this concealer and I just like seeing my skin become just a slightly more evened out version of itself but without it looking like I've put on a layer of makeup. So I'm blending the color corrector into the concealer and applying them essentially as one product, like one mixed product. But I'm only applying them on the parts of my face where I need it. So like this part of my chin right here, or my jaw, I guess, I don't need makeup right there. And because I've found a mix of the color corrector and the concealer that matches the skin that's right there, I'm not bringing it down there. I just use it to cover up the redness and acne scars that were on that part of my cheek. And same thing on the other side here. So right here where I've applied the product is uneven, the tone is uneven, but down here, the, I don't have scars down there and I don't have redness down there. So I'm just mixing the product together and then applying it where I need it and just blending it softly out onto that part of my face. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if you can hear what I'm saying. Onto that part of my face where I don't need it. I'm putting it over the middle of my nose, the bridge of my nose, but I'm not too pressed about applying it to the tip of my nose because I know I'm going to blush and or highlight a little bit there. Um, and the same with like my upper cheekbones right there. And then I'm just, you know, putting it in the center of my forehead to help, help keep an even effect, but I'm not obsessed with blending it all the way up to my hairline because you know, for the most part, my forehead is in pretty good shape and also um, it's covered with my bangs. My chin is where I tend to need the most coverage, my chin and then those like parts of my cheeks that have scarring. So I'm blending it here. I also saved my chin for last so that the product could sort of set up and get a little bit stiffer. And then by the time I got to it with the brush, it was less prone to get picked up and wiped away by the brush. So that's evened things out pretty well. There's still a little bit of redness on my chin and that's where I usually go in with like a brighter concealer. And this is my Makeup Forever HD. Yesterday when I used it, I was nothing came off. I like scraped the bottom and I really, I couldn't get a single drop. I'm gonna go ahead and dig out the one that I have from ColourPop that I've been meaning to give away. I remember it being like not as perfect as it, of a match as this one but like serviceable and I think that instead of buying this again I might just pull it out and see if I can make it work. Yeah the color says Fair 07 C. It's quite fair but I was thinking that I would buy the one because I do like the formula a lot. I was thinking that I would um, give this one away when I sent the package to my cousin and then I would buy the one that claims to be like my exact color, like a better match, either a neutral or a warm toned one, that I would buy that from ColourPop, but ColourPop isn't shipping right now. So, you know, that did make my face look pinker than my neck, more than it did before when I just had the Erin's Faces one on. So the jury is still out on that. I'm gonna give it a, a couple of more tries, but I feel like the whole point of that second phase of concealer for me, the brightening concealer, is to make my face match my neck better. And I feel like that kind of moved me a little bit in the other direction. So I'm not sure if it will be a good replacement for the one that I ran out of for Makeup Forever. And maybe if I do end up placing a Sephora order to review one of those cream blushes, maybe I'll just go ahead and replace my concealer because it was the only one that I had left that I considered to be one that I own. This one I had decluttered because I was going to give it away. All right, that was like a lot of hullabaloo about concealers and base and stuff like that. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and bronze up my neck as I've been doing a lot lately because putting on this sheer base, I always end up with my neck looking kind of bright compared to my face. Just a little bit. Yeah, I feel like I look like 
I don't have any makeup on my face. It may be in the monitor because it has made me look a little bit ghostly. It might look more like I have base on than it does in real life. But in real life, with this base on, when I look in the mirror, I kind of look like I just woke up like this and that I just happen to have very even skin tone. Let's go ahead and do eyes next. I usually, even if I do my base before my eyes, I usually do my eyes before I go into cheek products because sometimes I end up blending my cheek products into my eye look and I always kind of like to know which direction I'm going to have gone with my eyes before I go in with cheek products. So I'm going to prime my eyes. Although you know what, talking about cheek products has made me realize that I've been wanting to build an eye look with one of my Rowan quads over a base of this cream blush from CoverGirl which I've been wearing so much and loving so much. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this cream blush and I'm going to apply it to my eyelids and my cheeks simultaneously while the eye primer is still maybe a little bit tacky so it'll give the eye primer and this blush a chance to kind of mingle and make friends on my lids and set down together. This cream blush always ends up looking scarily bright to begin with, just like impossible. And then it always, even though I'm so fair, it always buffs out to something that to me is really workable. And if I ever go too far, it's super easy to go back with the brush that I used for concealer and just kind of tone it down a little bit. But first I'm adding more. <laughs> I was saying that as I added more. I just feel like I have a little too much right here. And I'm gonna tone it down on my eyes a little. You see that sheen? It's like a combination of the product that's underneath, the VDL primer, the really lovely glowy concealer, and also there's a bit of sheen in this. You can't r really tell until it's buffed out and it kind of becomes part of the skin. It's a really pretty product. All right, I feel like that is a really interesting base for a look with the Rowan 52 Degrees Cool Quad. I've gotten a ton of requests to do a look with this quad on camera, so that's what I'm going to do today. And I, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and put down a base of the kind of like cool toned brownie bronzy shadow, which is predictably my favorite one in this palette. I'm not going to stick just to it though. I'm going to go into the purple as well. I've really been loving the purple on my lower lash line. Okay, so I put the shape down with my finger. I'm going to go in with a brush and just soften the edges of that and maybe also apply a little bit more of the cream shadow with the brush. I love how the Rowan shadow has blended into the base that I laid down of that blush. I just think that they look really pretty together. They're working really well. They're agreeing with each other. Um, and I really like the color that I'm getting. It's like this watercolory base of the blush and then a lot of texture on top with the shadow. I'm gonna go ahead and put some of the purple from the palette with a little pencil brush onto my lower lash line. So I'm digging right into the pan with the brush. When I first started using these shadows, I felt like I struggled to pick them up with a brush, but it was because I just wasn't being aggressive enough with them. You really have to not be precious with them, dig into them, and now that I've learned to do that and to break the seal on the pans and just kind of whip them up into a, a cream that I can work with, now that I've learned to do that, I really love applying them with a brush. Okay, so I put the purple on the lower lash line. I really, really love that color. I feel like it makes my eyes look greener, and I like adding it to a look like this. I'm sorry, there's some kind of grinding going on in the street and it keeps starting and stopping and I keep waiting until it stops to talk and I just can't do that anymore. So it might be starting and stopping. I'm just gonna talk through it. I hope that you guys can't hear it. Um, but that was why I didn't narrate myself putting the purple on because while I was doing it, the grinding was going on. And then I also went in with a little bit of this coal liner that I have, which is a Lancome product. And I put that on my, my waterline, my tight line, and I also put a little bit of it into my outer corner and just smudged it around to kind of like anchor the look. Um, but on my lower lash line, it's really still featuring that purple from the Rowan Quad. I love the purple because it's not too bright, like it's not too primary. It's a very grungy purple in tone. And I just, I like the way that it kind of lights up my eye color. The grinding just stopped. It is just, it's going on for minutes at a time. I cannot believe this is happening right now. But, um, I, okay, before, now it's starting up again. So quickly, I'll tell you, I'm going to put a first coat of the Erin's Faces Mascara onto both sets of eyelashes. So you can see how it would kind of look 
um, on, in like a normal or quick application or like an everyday application, just so you can see how it looks without going in and building it and building it and building it for a more editorial or more dramatic look, which is what I will then go on to do because that's what I usually do. But I do wanna show you how it looks kind of in all stages. So here's the initial application. The component is very beautiful. It is glass. It's the most luxurious feeling mascara that I've ever held in my hands because it's very, very heavy. This is all glass. I believe it's the same component as the concealer. It's just that for the mascara, it's coated in something matte and white, but it's clearly the same glass tube underneath. And this is what the wand looks like. It's kind of like a more closely shorn version, like a, a slightly better behaved version of the Too Faced Better Than Sex wand. It's got that hourglass shape and it's got those fluffy bristles that kind of indicate that you're looking for a fluffy lash when you use it. But it's not as big circumference wise as like the Better Than Sex brush or the Dior Show brush, for example. So there's the application having just dipped the brush in one time and then gone back and forth between my two eyes without even dipping it in again for the second eye. So this is literally just one coat. It's like the coat of dipping it in one time and applying it to both eyes, a very natural mascara application. And it's put down a base of itself that has given some fluffiness to my lashes. This is the thing that I think is really awesome about it. It's almost like it's made them airier from the root and it has not caused them to stick together, which is my pet peeve when it comes to like an initial application of the mascara. If the wand or the formula kind of causes my lashes to stick to each other in, and then I can't separate them from each other, then it's a non-starter for me. But this has like separated them, made them feel like they multiplied, made them more fluffy, and given me a base to go back and to build like much more length and volume on top. And that's what I'm gonna do with just one eye so you can see the difference in the second coat. Okay, there's the second coat on my right eye and just the first coat on my left eye. And you can see that with that second coat comes unbelievable length with this mascara. I can see the fibers building. Like I can see the little bits of them grouping towards the tips of my lashes and then straightening out and literally making my lashes longer, but still retaining that fluffiness at the root. And that was what sold it for me. When I first received this and I applied it and I saw it doing that, I was like, wow, Erin, <laughs> wow. You really did the thing. So that is what to me makes this a mascara that I can depend on. It puts it in that league with the ones that I have loved so much over the course of my life. A Cosmetic Superhero, Dior Show, the Milani highly rated as of late, and of course Too Faced Better Than Sex is like a classic example of the kind of mascara that I tend to like. Even the one that I have from Gucci that I've been using recently, I feel like this is giving me something similar. It gives me a similar ability to build much longer lashes onto my natural lashes and to keep them fluffy at the same time. All right, I'm going to go back and apply the other coat to the other lash and then I'm going to kind of keep building and just like get it to the full level of drama that I usually go for when I'm wearing this mascara. Okay, there we are. I've built it up to full velvet pipe cleaner spider legs and that is what I love. I'm going to see if I can get even closer to the camera. Oh yeah, there you can really see it. So I think that that initial application with sort of like the soft wispy fluffy lashes, that is probably where most people would stop and that would probably be enough for most people. But for me, for me to really love a mascara, for it to really be one that I want in my arsenal, it has to be able to at least do this if I try to make it do this. It has to be able to get to this point without it just causing all of my lashes to like clump together into wet spikes. I have to be able to get these velvety, these like velvety fluffy plushy lashes. Okay, so that's the mascara on. I'm glad that I was able to demonstrate for you at close range what I know it's capable of after having had it for about a month. And I've been using it every other day pretty much. I've been like trading off using this and the Gucci mascara because I was also reviewing that Gucci mascara this month. And I haven't felt more excited to reach for one than the other. To me, they both allow me to build my lashes to this point, this like very dramatic, wide-eyed, opened, fluffy, floofy, 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 velvety, splink, splink lash 
that's what I'm after. And if a mascara can get me there, then I'm all in. It's amazing that it's a mascara with a clean ingredient deck and that one can get both that kind of more everyday flattering lash and this more dramatic editorial lash, depending on application. I do need to tell you though that I have discovered with this mascara one drawback for me, and that is that if I'm wearing it and my eyes fill with water, and this can happen for me in one of two ways. One is if I cry, not if I just like tear up a little bit, but if I truly like cry, like both of my eyes fill with a lot of water, then something in it stings my eyes. And it also happened once when I was cutting onions and my eyes got really, really, really watery when I was cooking and I was wearing this mascara, something in it stung my eyes. I've worn it so many days on which it hasn't stung my eyes and I've worn it on days when I have maybe teared up a little or cooked and gotten a little bit of watery eyes and it hasn't stung my eyes. It's only happened when I've like full on had like eyes full of tears for one reason or another. There's something in it that's stinging. So it hasn't been prohib prohibitive for me, like it hasn't been a problem every time I wear it and so it hasn't kept me from wanting to wear it. It's just something that I've become aware of and I need to pass it along to you because I don't want you to have seen like how amazing it looks and to run out and buy it because of that and then put it on and then cry later in the day and then your eyes sting and you're like, Hannah, why didn't I tell you? So I'm like telling you now. But I also know that eye sensitivity is just like different for different people. And there are people with sensitive eyes who can't put things in their eyes that I'm like cramming all up into my waterline and never having a problem with. So I don't feel like this is a mascara that's like gonna sting everyone's eyes. I just wanna be fully transparent with you about every aspect of my experience with it. The other thing is it's never happened when I'm applying the mascara. Like just now you saw, I get really close into the root and inevitably some of the mascara gets onto my tight line and into my waterline when I'm applying it. And that has never stung my eyes or made my eyes water. It hasn't been like a uh, ever present enough or problematic enough to make me not want to give this a good review because I think it is a marvel. It's just been the one negative. All right, I'm gonna do my brows. I'm gonna put my mole back on and then I'm gonna do my lips. And I actually have a question for you guys regarding brows. So I am so excited about reviewing the Patrick Ta Major Brow. Like I'm planning to buy it when it releases at Sephora. I'm planning to review it on my channel. I'm gonna give you the DL, but it has completely disappeared. The, the product page that they initially put up on the Sephora website has completely disappeared. You know, it was that page that they sometimes put up before something launches. So right now, if you go to Sephora, you can see the sales page, the product page for the Fenty cheek products, like the Fenty cream cheeks. You can see the swatches, you can see the colors, and it just says that none of them are in stock because it hasn't launched yet. And then it also has the launch date on that page. And there used to be a page like that for the Patrick Todd Major Brow, this is what I'm trying to say. And I went to that page and I learned about the product, product and I saw the launch date and I got excited about it. And then that page disappeared. And so I'm assuming that they decided to postpone the launch, even though there hasn't been an announcement to that effect. I'm assuming that that's what they decided to do just because I know that there are some brands who are deciding to do that. Or maybe they hadn't decided yet if they were going to postpone, they hadn't decided what they're going to do. And they took the page down just in case so that they could have like more time to decide without the pressure of that promise of the launch date being up there. So my question for you is, A, have you heard anything? Do you know what's going on with Major Brow? Do you know if they postponed the launch? Do you know if they just took down the page or and if they're gonna maybe still launch it at the end of April when they said they were going to? Do you know what is going on? Have you heard something that I have not? And then my other question is, B, my, secondly, B, are there other brow products out there that kind of promise to do the same thing? Because I got all excited about having an alternative to actual soap brows in my possession and being able to like alternate between them. I'm pretty much completely out of my CoverGirl product. I can barely make it work anymore. So. So right now it's kind of just me and the soap like hanging out and I was really looking forward to middle to the end of April being a time when I would like acquire a second brow product and I would be able to trade off. And um, I was looking forward to it so much that I kind of feel like if Major Brow doesn't launch when they said that it was going to, I might want to try and review a different but similar product. So 
Have you guys tried the one from Iconic London? I feel like I've read only bad reviews of it. I've read a lot of people saying that you can get the effect initially, but that it doesn't have the hold that it needs to have. But if that's the case, then it won't fly for me because my brows are very stubborn and they don't like to stay in place. So they really need something that has a lot of hold. Um, so I don't know. Do you think that Iconic London's, what is it called, brow silk? Do you think that it would be worth me trying? Do you think the people who give me bad reviews just didn't know how to use it? And are there any other ones out there? Like I know there was like a bubble brow from Flower Beauty for a while, but then maybe it got discontinued. I don't know. Do you know if there is something out there, basically like a predecessor to Patrick Ta Ta's major brow that I might be able to get my hands on and <laughs> use for the same purposes before it releases? All right, I'm gonna fill out my lip line just the tiniest bit for this little smidgen of a lip liner from Givenchy. I'm going to apply this Erin Spaces lip gloss, which I love, over top of it. I really love this lip gloss because it is not sticky, but it's not thin. It's not like that thin, slippery formula, like slippery, oily formula that slides off. So I always feel confident doing what I'm about to do, which is kind of overlining my lips with the very tip of this super thin doe foot applicator. I feel like I can place the lip gloss sort of on that lip line, that rim of my lips, and I feel like it will stay there rather than sliding off, which is what even like the Fenty gloss, which I love and use all the time, it would slide off. So I never bother sort of precisely lining my lips with that gloss. I always just slap it on and go, and that's one of the things that I like about it. It's great for that. But when I want to have like a defined sort of juicy lip that maybe, um, you know, the gloss is placed so that it, my lips look a little bigger than they are, and they look really, really wet, this is the one that I reach for. One of the most notable things about this gloss to a contemporary beauty aficionado probably is its lack of smell or or rather the smell that it has that isn't the smell isn't like an added scent so it has a smell but it's just like the smell of it almost smells like a neutral like a neutral cooking oil like grapeseed oil or something mixed with like pigment like something you would use as an artist like a mixer as an artist. So it's not unpleasant. It's a super neutral, like utilitarian smell. Um, and you know, it's it's unscented. It's supposed to be something that won't irritate people who have a strong aversion to scent. Cause it's not like you can still smell it once it's on. It's just the smell of the product. If you actually smell the doe fit applicator, you're just smelling the ingredients that are there, which are clean ingredients. And I'm not somebody who is irritated by the smell of lip gloss. Like I really like the juicy candy like smell of the Fenty gloss. I really like cake smell or vanilla smell, sweet smelling lip gloss. I really like that. So to me, the fact that it is such a neutral or such a non-smell is like maybe even a drawback. Like it's not my favorite thing about it, but it does make it something that I can more happily recommend at large because I know that there are people out there who are sensitive to scent or who don't like certain scents and they can't take my other lip gloss recommendations. And to those people I say, this is a really good lip gloss that has for you the added benefit of not being scented. This is in the color Sunny Side and it really lights up the lips. I mean, on my lips right now, it's mixed with the liner that was underneath it. This is a nice light, fresh, almost peachy color with a little bit of glisten in it. I really like wearing it for filming. Is that it? I think that that is it. I'm gonna go ahead and film my intro now, which you guys will have already seen, but I have not yet filmed. Now that I've got my face on, my quarantine drag, I can film the intro to this video. Um, let me know if you have any questions, especially about the mascara or about, you're kidding me, please. Let me know if you have any questions, especially about, let me know if you have any questions about the mascara or other things from Erin's Spaces. Again, I know that for a lot of you, shopping is like fully relegated to the realm of fantasy or just theory right now, and that's totally fine. It's fine anytime, and it's also fine now. Um, and the, uh, and again, like I, like I will have hopefully said in the intro, there are other ways to support Erin and to support all of the small businesses that you're trying to support right now or that you kind of want to send good vibes to right now. But if you are clicking through and you're looking at the website or if you're thinking about placing an order, 
the ones, the products that I've used that spring immediately to mind as being fantastic are the sunscreen, which we all know, I've talked about it a million times, the Tamanu oil, that's like my hero product for my face, and the concealer. The concealer has been kind of like a sleeper hit for me. I just liked it a lot, then I was going to give it to my mom, and then I missed it so much, and now I'm using it every single day, and I feel like my skin is absolutely loving it. It feels like a really, really nourishing thing to put on my face, and I love the dewy finish. The other sleeper hit was that peppermint scrub. You remember that peppermint body scrub? I wasn't sure I was going to like it because it made me feel cold, and then I ended up loving it because it made me feel tingly, and then I used it all up, and I've really been missing it. I so wish that I had like another thing of that peppermint body scrub because I've been taking a lot of baths lately, and in normal times, I like a sweet like a vanilla or chocolate scented bath, like a sweet, or even maybe a lavender, something, I don't know, soft and cozy and just indulgent. But these days, I don't know what it is, something about what's going on right now. I've been craving like a, like a really invigorating spicy bath, like a cinnamon bath or, or like a peppermint menthol bath or uh, I don't know, like a eucalyptus bath, like those kinds of things. I've been wanting baths that will like wake up my muscles and just like really penetrate and soothe. And that's what I feel like that peppermint scrub did do for me. And alas, at this point I've used it all up. So that's another one that I kind of can't stop thinking about from Erin's Faces. I've never disliked a product that I've tried from Erin's Faces, but those are the ones that are probably like my greatest hits right now off the top of my head. If you have questions about other ones, leave your questions in the comment section down below. I'm just, I'm just ending the video now. I can't with this anymore. Don't forget to take extra good care of yourself and wait, no, thank you for, <laughs> thank you for watching and don't forget to take extra good care of yourself right now so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.